Okay, guys, let's jump back into our translation. So, uh, at this point in the story of Cambridge 29's translations, we have the uh, two women and the two children, and they're still in the, the um, prison in the car care, which is that arch of Titus. And uh, the woman's about to, to tell the story of how everyone on Masada died. It's a really kind of sad story. Uh, again, if you want to read the even sadder, much more lengthy version, you go ahead and read Josephus' Jewish Wars. Uh, really, really, uh, really good reading, uh, as long as you don't mind things that are a bit depressing. Anyhow, so jump into it. Illa nocte. Eliazarus Judeis Concilium Dirum Pro Posuit. So, Ila Nocte, we've got this ablative construction of time. That night, or on that night, it's an ablative of location and time. On that night, Eliazarus, so Eliezer, remember that the, his name is not naturally second declension, it is Latinized, unlike many other names. Uh, this one actually is Latinized with that U.S. ending. So on that night, Eliezer proposed, proposed terrible dirum concilium uh, advice judeis to the Jews, to the Jewish people. So a uh, perfect tense verb, dirum and concilium, both direct objects, the accusative, and judeis is the indirect object, the uh, date of indirect object, the date of plural. So inquit, he said, magno indiscrimine sumus. We are in uh, great, uh, a great crisis, a great crisis. So present tense verb right here, magno is modifying discrimine, both are in the ablative. Notice again that the, uh, the preposition right there, that in that introduces the two ablatives, uh, it, it splits the ablatives, right? So magno goes outside of the preposition uh, but it goes with that ablative now. So we are in a great crisis. Also, the word discriminate, good way to remember it. Uh, crimine, we have the word crime from this. Uh, so crimen means judgment. And D, so it's, it's a separate, separate judgments. Uh, by crisis, it means that there's, there's two potential outcomes right here. There's two potential outcomes and they're trying to figure out which way to go. So there's two potential judgments that are diverse from each other. They're trying to, they're at that point of insecurity. So we are in a great crisis. He said, nos judai, so we Jews, confisi deo. So this is a participial phrase modifying the nos judai. So uh, confisi is a perfect passive participle, nominative plural, and it comes from confido. So it is to put trust in, and that takes the uh, dative to put trust in God. So we Jews, having put trust in God. Now, notice that even though it's a perfect passive participle, we're translating it more or less uh, actively. The verb itself is not, uh, it's not deponent, but it's, it doesn't, it's not exactly a one-to-one -one translation with this. We, probably the most direct translation is having been faithful to God, if you wanted to make it um, a passive. But most of the time we don't have to worry about retaining the passiveness. It's just uh, we Jews having trusted in God. Resistimus Romanis ad hoc. Ra resisted the Romans uh, up to this point, right? So, Notice that resistor right here is also taking a uh, dative. So resisted to the disinterest of the Romans, the dative of a reference or disadvantage, and ad hoc is up to now. A lot of the verbs that we're gonna see in this passive, just like confisi, confido right there, and resisto, are taking datives. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that's not directly in the grammar of this stage, but it's something that they're, they're using and introducing a lot of. So, um, Putting it all together, we Jews, having put our faith in God, resisted the Romans to this point. Nunc now, ili ad nos. So ili is the subject. Nos is actually accusative. It's going with the triad. So those guys, they, parant, are preparing. 
trahere, to drag, and then here's the accused of direct object of that infinitive, that prolative infinitive. Those guys are preparing to drag us, where? In servitutem. So um, into slavery. Notice that it's an in plus an accusative. It's into, into the state of slavery. Not, uh, not sorus, as in in a slave, but into in servituto is slavery itself, the state of it. Um, so now those guys are preparing to drag us into slavery. Nulla space salutis nobis ostenditur. So nulla space. Space is the nominative singular subject. It is feminine and it is being modified by nulla. No hope. No hope. Passive tense verb. Not, not passive tense verb. Passive voice verb from ostendo. Uh, no hope is shown to us. Data of reference is shown to us. And then salutis right here is a genitive. It is a, an objective genitive because space is a, is, has a verbal form, spero. And if you've got a genitive with a noun that it has a verbal form, it's an objective genitive. So no hope of salvation is shown to us. None, so this is indicating that it's, it's looking for an affirmative answer. Surely, melius est, it is better, it is better, perire, to die. And then since we have melius there, we're expecting a clause of comparison. Right? Quam will introduce that adverbial clause of comparison. So surely it is better to perish than Ketere, uh, to fall. Really, there should be another est in here, but ests, any form of sum, regularly drops out. You don't need to, to explicitly state it. Even in English, we don't need to say, then it is to fall. So, then to fall. Again, with a dative, keto right here in this, this form um, takes a dative, Romanis to the Romans. So, putting it all together, surely it is better to perish than it is to fall to the Romans. Ego, ego ipse. So remember with, with nouns, uh, sorry, with verbs in Latin, you don't need to have that pronoun. Ego is already emphasizing that this person is taking, taking a special interest in the action. I, and then ipse, myself, that intensive pronoun. I, myself, occipio. So accept. And then what does he accept? Mortem, death. Death, and then we have inflictum. It's a participle right there, modifying mortem. Death inflicted, mea manu. So we've got two ablatives right here. Ablative uh, mea is modifying manu. So uh, inflicted by my hand, by my own hand. This is to say he accepts the idea of committing suicide, which is prohibited, uh, prohibited under Jewish uh, Jewish belief system. So this is this is something that he's really he's proposing as a, as a really out there solution to this. He knows that the Romans are going to come and crucify everyone and he's saying let's just off ourselves rather than accept that. Which is you have to understand that the, the people at Masada um, were uh, very zealous and um, this was uh, this is sort of evidence of that that zealotry. So putting it all together, I myself accept death inflicted by my own hand. Um, this is a uh, this whole phrase right here with starting with inflicted is a participial phrase going off of mortem. So sperno, I reject servitutem. I reject slavery. Next sentence, his urbis. So. With these words, now these these are two ablatives right here, uh, instrumental ablatives. This is one participle away from being a uh, an ablative absolute. So if there was say locutus right there, uh, having spoken these words or after you spoke these words, it would be an ablative absolute. There's no participle, so we're just going to treat these as instrumental ablatives. With these words, Eliazarus, nominative subject. Ah. Uh, Exitawit, exitawit, 
excited. So perfect tense right there. So he aroused. And then the direct object is ardorem. I specifically modified the taunting. Such great ardor, such great uh, enthusiasm, I guess is how it's translated here. But really ardor, it, it means like burning. It's like a burning uh, emotion. You see this used for like a flaming emotion of, of something that's really been stirred up. Um, so he aroused such great ardor in the Jews. So this is a prepositional phrase right there with a, it's a locative ablative. And then with tantum, since tantum is uh, in this main clause, we see an ut and we're automatically expecting a result clause. So uh, with these words, Eliezer, aroused such great enthusiasm in the Jews that festinarent, imperfect subjunctive right there, they hurried, they hastened, ad mortem, to death, statum, adverb, uh, immediately, at once. So altogether, with these words, Eliezer, uh, aroused such great passion in the Jews that they immediately hastened towards death. Next sentence, weary, so nominative subject, and then we see over here that this between uxod liber, liberos, these are obviously accused of plurals, saying, okay, well, these could be the direct object of a kiderunt, or we see amplexi, amplexi is a participle. So we've got another participial phrase, and these we'll find out are actually doing double duty as both the direct object of amplexi and of a kiderunt, which makes it even sadder. And we'll, we'll talk about the structure of this uh, sentence in just a second. So the men, having embraced, having embraced their uxores, librosqua, their wives and children, or killed. Now, the obvious implied direct object of this is uxoros and librosqua. So these are, are really doing double duty. Also, let's, let's think about this. The, in, in terms of structure, and this is something that will become more and more and more important as we read very, very highly constructed, educated, original Latin. The men, the wives, and the children are all placed together in terms of the, the nouns. And then over here, we have these two verbal forms put right next to each other, away from the nouns. First one is amplexi, embracing, very warm, uh, familial thing that you would imagine. And it's placed there, so it's, oh, this is nice. The men embraced their families. And then last final word, it's, it's something that is often caused in, uh, called uh, Fulman in Clauser poetry. It's, it's a lightning strike at the end of a line that is surprising or shocking. You just have that, um, they embrace them and then they kill them. That's, that's supposed to hit hard. And it's, I'm, this is really a well-written, line for for Cambridge Latin. And you'll see uh, when, this is why I prefer original Latin, this happens all the time. These kind of hard hitting lines happen all the time in poetry and in original Latin. And it's absolutely, uh, I wouldn't say beautiful, at least not, not for AA. It's structurally beautiful, although thematically often horrifying as we've seen in this line. So um, putting it all together, the men having embraced their women, uh, their uh, wives and children killed and then you'd have to put in brackets them. Cum, so we've got right here a cum, and we're expecting either an ablative or some sort of temporal clause. There's no ablative, so it has to be a temporal clause, especially since we see this pluperfect subjunctive right here. So when or once they had completed this honk, Diram et saiwara, saiwam rem, this terrible and savage thing. Um, again, thing, rem, race rem, you can translate, you get a little bit of latitude uh, with translating this. Uh, you can say, uh, not just thing, but you, can, you could probably say uh, action or, or events or something like that. And in context, it will make it 
it will be clear. But just just for this, it's just fine to stick with, with the thing. So once they had completed this terrible and savage thing, decem aorum, so ten of them parted of genitive, having been chosen by lot. So decem is the, the subject, right? It's the subject of the sentence. Uh, aorum is a partitive genitive, and then ducti is modifying the decem, having been chosen, a perfect participle, sorte, ab instrumental ablative, by lot. So sorts are, uh, uh, it's a lot, usually drawing, uh, drawing the short stick, um, often in this, in this way that they chose lots back then. And then main verb of that is interfecurant, perfect tense, killed, Keteros, direct object of interfectorant, the others. So, so 10 of them, having been chosen by Lot, killed the others. Then, right, then, so this is a, a conjunction right there. Unus, one, ex illis. So, ablative separation technically, with the illis one out of those guys. So one of those 10 is really what it's saying. It's, it's going back to uh, the 10 that killed everyone else. It's process of elimination. Uh, this one guy, and then we have a uh, participial phrase here, perfect participle, modified unus, having been chosen by lot in turn in weekend, so adverb, adverbial clue, accusative right there. Um, main verb, is interfecit, killed, uh, reliquos noam, the remaining nine, postquam, afterwards. So putting it all together, then one of them, one from them, having chosen and been chosen in turn by lot, afterwards killed the remaining nine. So there's one guy left. And lastly, uh, so there's no word for lastly here, but uh, transfix it, transfix it. So he pierced, say ipsum, he himself. So he pierced himself. It's not really very clear to say it in, in English this way, but they're really letting you know that he's killing himself by both the reflexive pronouns say as the direct object of transfix it and ipsum being the intensifying, uh, intensifying uh, pronoun going with say. And then Gladio, instrumental ablative, with his sword. Uh, you'd have to put his in brackets. So he pierced himself, he himself, with his sword. Quo modo, nos ipsi effugimus. So, rogavit uh, simul. So, in what way, in what way, this is introducing that it's a question right there with this phrase, in what way? Um, ablatives by nature, but we'll really we're treating it as, as sort of an interrogative introduction to this. In what way did, we have to put that in our English translation, we ourselves, uh, so nominative subject, uh, personal pronoun, plus that uh, intensifying pronoun. In what way did we ourselves escape, if we must rogawit, perfect tense verb, uh, asked Simon. Simon uh, being the subject for Gawit. Ego aliazaro parere non potui, responded Mater. So the mother responded, I potui non. I was not able to uh, obey Eliazaros. So the main verb right here is potu, it's perfect tense. Non is the adverb negating it. And then parere is that complementary infinitive. Parere, uh, pario means a whole bunch of things. It's one of those, those Latin verbs that if you look up, look it up in a big dictionary, there will be a big entry. In this case, it means obey. And it is another verb that takes a dative, which is why Eliezaro is in the dative there. Um, so putting it all together, I was not able, or I, yeah, I was not able to obey Eliezer, responded the mother. Next sentence. 
what was coming in loco subterraneo latte bomb so uh let's look around for our main verb and it is at the end of the sentence latte bomb latte means to hide uh, so i hide latte bomb is i was hiding imperfect Wobis cum, so cum wobis, that's an ablative uh, accompaniment. You'll see uh, with pronouns with cum, often the pronouns will come in front of the cum. So te cum, me cum, wobis cum. It means with you, with you. In loco, so ablative of location, in a place, and then this, uh, this adjective is modified loco, in an underground place. So putting it all together, I was hiding with you in an underground place. Ignawa. Ignawa means coward. And it's, a, it's evocative here. It's a feminine evocative. Uh, coward. Tlamawat Simon. Exclaimed or shouted Simon. Perfect tense for right there. Ego. Mortem haud quam quam. Timeo. So I. Timeo. I fear. And the direct object. Death. Haud quam quam. Not at all. I fear death, not at all. Ego, memor patris exempli iandem fortitudinem praestare volo. So I, and then memor right here is men, uh, mindful or uh, remembering. Uh, and then we've got two genitives, two genitives. This is an objective genitive with memoir, that, uh, that uh, verbal form, right? So remembering of the example and then of the father. Yeah, so this is an objective genitive with exemplary. And patris is a possessive genitive. So the father's example. So I, remembering the father's example, wolo, want, praestare, another complementary or prolative infinitive, to show. We saw this uh, in one of the previous passages to show ayandim portitudinem, the same courage. Ayandim modified portitudinem. So putting it all together, I, remembering father's, my father's example, want to show the same courage. All right. Um, so very grammar heavy passage right there, but. The, the farther on we get in the book, the more we will have that, and the more there is to talk about. If there's any questions, let me know, and I will see you, uh, see you in class.